and today I'm making my own components. I've got to make a few inductors. Now these are essentially coils of wire. In fact, this is a little preview of what I'm going to make. I've had to modify my coil winding machine to actually wind onto such small bobbins and I need to make quite accurate 1 millihenry inductors. Now I have done a bit of homework to work out how to do this. Uh, there's some calculations you can do to sort of work out how many coils of wire or turns of wire you need to put on the bobbin and it depends on the diameter of the bobbin, the length of the wire, it's quite involved. So ultimately it's trial and error. And I had a little practice and I found out to get exactly what I need, that one milli Henry, I need to put 364 turns of wire around here. And here's the winding machine. It's almost set ready to go with the bobbin already loaded in. This is the custom shaft I've made to specifically hold it. So I'm going to thread this uh, 34 gauge wire through here. It goes over this pulley there and it goes back under here. Just loop it over here and under there. Just got to feed the wire through the little hole just there, okay. Let's clamp that up. Okay, I'm just going to adjust this thing to about 34, so that's what the cable is. This turns counter is already set to zero, so I'll keep turning, cranking this handle, and when this gets round to 364, we stop. I'm just going to take this um, <laughs> wire tail down a bit. <laughs> so if you're getting wrapped up, <laughs> that's a mistake I've made before. So, we'll just crank it on. Sixty-four. Well, that's 364 turns of wire on there. I'm just going to cut it off about over here because I want to have a bit extra in case it tests a little bit low. So what I'll do now, just undo this, fetch the spindle out, try to feed this wire through this little hole, and just pull it without that loop in it. I'm just going to knacker it that. Oh. There we are. Just to check if this coil's <laughs> the right value, I'm going to connect these clips on this little piece of test equipment. Just bear the end of the wires so it actually <laughs> conducts. Be careful not to make an extra loop here because that will essentially <laughs> add another turn <laughs> to the coil. Drum roll. <laughs> there we go, 999.3 micro Henry's. So that is really close to the 1 milli Henry I'm aiming for. That's perfect. That's a really good result. So I just need to make another seven of these <laughs> just the same. Now I've wound all these coils, they're still a little bit likely to unravel so I'm going to stabilise these by melting some wax into them just to bind it all together, stop them unravelling. Here's a little pot of yellow <laughs> paraffin wax pellets. So I'm going to take the coil, I'm just going to sort of sit it in there. 
it'll <laughs> it'll sort itself out. Take a big melted piece out. It's a problem with this. <laughs> You're gonna end up with clumps of it. It's gonna connect some crocodile clips to the ends of the leads. Oh, there's a, a <laughs> it's a very long wire this one. These coils have about five ohms of resistance, so I'm actually just going to current limit this to um, one amp. So to get this um, one, okay, one amp. Probably doesn't need 12 volts, but <laughs> it's your current limit. Let's have a look at this under the thermal imaging camera. See how hot it's getting. 70 odd degrees now. Should be seeing some action. Melting wax going on. It's all sort of fusing in nicely. Just knock some of the excess off here. Oh. Okay, knock the power off that one. Well, I'm very pleased with these. If you're wondering what I'm going to do with them all, well, you're going to have to keep watching my videos, aren't you? <laughs> Catch you next time.